Hello guys, this is Razor Game Dev, and welcome to this first episode in Let's Make a Game in Love 2D. So, this game... Okay, so let, let, let's talk about college. Um, I just got done, or n almost done, with the first quarter of college. I still have finals and stuff. But um, during that time, I wasn't really able to do a lot of uh, work on the channel and all that, even though I really wanted to. It's just been really busy. I've, I've been able to t uh, test out of several classes, and uh, my class schedule is kind of crazy, so... But things are starting to wind down right now, and I have uh, Thanksgiving break, and I really want to make a game. So, we're going to be using Love 2D. Uh, this series, I'm going to make an adventure game, I think. So, I've been looking looking back, I mean, I've been, I've been playing old games on my uh, Game Boy Color and stuff, and I'm really inspired by uh, games like um, Oracle of Seasons, Zelda Oracle uh, of Seasons, and... Uh, what was the other one? Um, Oracle of Time, or anyway, the 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 Zelda games on the Game Boy Color. Uh, I think they're really fun and uh, quite interesting. Um, anyway, so we're just gonna we're gonna make something in the vein of that, kind of inspired by that. Uh, as you can see, we got a new setup. We got keyboard cam and face cam. And if you guys like it, let me know. Um, also, there is a. I, I started. I wrote a little bit of code to get us started because. The first little thing is just mostly boilerplate, which is kind of kind of boring. If you want to know how to make this stuff, uh, it's all covered in Let's Make a Platformer series. Um, anyway, oh, and about this series, uh, it's going to be a lot more raw than Let's Make a Platformer. Like, Let's Make a Platformer, actually, I, I wanted it to be like this, but I, I worked more... I, it's more like a tutorial, which I didn't really want it to be. Um, I kind of want to spin off and do my own tutorial series and actually break down and talk about each of these modules a little bit closer. But with this series, it's going to be a lot more um, less refined, and it's going to be more just watching me make a game and getting some response from you guys. Um, I'm really inspired by projects like Handmade Hero, and if you guys don't know what Handmade Hero is, check him out. Uh, it's basically it, it's this guy that's making a game completely from scratch. Every single line of code is is his. He's not using SDL or any window wrapper. He's using pure Windows API, um, and he's writing it in a very C style. Way though, I believe he does use C++. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting series if you want to learn more about how hardware works. But anyway, we're just going to kick it off today. Um, now I'm trying to think of what would be something interesting. First off, let's just run this project. Uh, control B. I have it so it just automatically builds, and this is all it does. It goes to level 1. Um, level 1 is right over here. So, I think you'll see me make some assets on this tutorial series, at least very temporary ones. Uh, I think right now what we need is maybe an entity com um, component system, or at least get started on entity component system. So I'm going to name this entities. Um, I'm going to make a new folder, call it components. Um, and that should be it. I'm going to make a uh, module, I'm going to name it entity. Entity is going to be a table. And this is just how I've been how I've been structuring my quote unquote classes. Uh, so I create a global class right here. I'm I'm naming it entity, and then I create a have a, a method called new. And what that'll do is just return a table that contains all my entities uh, methods and properties. Um, I've been working a lot in C sharp too, uh, using Mono Game. Um, and maybe later in the series I'll show you some of the work I've been doing there. But if you guys are at all interested in Mono Game, I would love to do some programming with it. Uh, because I'm having a lot of fun with Mono Game. Okay. Let's do an ID. Well, actually, let's think. Yeah, I, I do want to do an ID. Um, yeah, I developed my own entity component system in C uh, excuse me, C Sharp, um, using Mono Game and all that. And I'm really enjoying it, so... I would love to do some some work with that. And if you guys are from a purely Lua and Love 2D uh, background, it's really good to expand out because Love 2D is a very awesome framework, but for really for production work, it's a little bit lacking in just some aspects. And I don't want people to hate on me for saying that. I love Love 2D, but. Uh, let me let me remember how I did this. So did I name it tick? I did name it tick. Okay. So let me actually think about what I'm doing. So this entity is going to create a tick and I think a draw. Let's go to the renderer. 
This is exactly the same as uh, the platformer series. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but um, because I didn't actually reference it. All right, so I did use the word render. Um, okay, that works. Let's tab this out to make it look nice. So these are just functions that the entity can... Actually, no, these aren't going to be overridable functions. Actually, I kind of want to make these uh, non-overridable, which you can't really do in Lua. Um, and then create some separate functions up here. So an entity is just going to be um, just a simple entity component system. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, I'll, I'll try to make a tutorial series on this soon because I, I really like the implementation of an entity component system. It actually saves you a lot of time. Um, there's a lot of there's drawbacks, of course. It kind of destroys encapsulation and all that. But there's a lot of really nice features that it can provide you. For instance, um, in C Sharp, I actually run Lua from well inside C Sharp. I have a Lua environment. And just a second, let me think. And it's really cool because I can load uh, tables, right? Lua tables from a file and create entities using those Lua tables, which you really can't do in a non object oriented or in a non component based uh, way. And if you have no idea what the heck I'm talking about, I think. Uh, you can get get by without knowing. Now you'll see. So let me go back to the game. Actually, let's uh, let's split this up a little bit. Let's do, let's do that. I like having. Actually, I named it main. Um, I like having it split up a little bit. So let's see. Um, so I just name a game render game loop render. All right. Entity. Well, actually, it's a game dot game loop. If I can type. So this keyboard I'm using, I it I actually just found it at Goodwill um, for five dollars, which I think is a complete steal because it's actually a really nice laptop. I'm not sure what switches it doesn't use switches. I think it's membrane, which I'm fine with actually. I don't mind it. It's it's surprisingly uh, it has a lot of it has really good travel. It has really good. Um, oh, what am I doing? This is why I can't talk while programming. My monitor just went out on the other side. Okay, uh, entity. All right, so that should do the trick. Let's just go into actually level. Yeah, so it's a, it's a membrane keyboard. It has good travel. It has. I'm really enjoying it actually. I like it quite a bit. I can type really fast. My plan is to actually spray paint the whole thing. I don't know if you can see very well, but over here I actually spray painted a little bit of it. Um, but I want to I want to spray paint the whole thing black. I memorized the keyboard, so I, I gave me some time to memorize the keyboard, so I don't have to struggle when the keys are completely black. Again, my monitors keep keeps going out. It's really strange. I hope that doesn't uh, mess up the recording at all. So let's create a new entity. Let's just say entity dot new. Uh, give it the ID of player. Now nothing should happen. This is just you should always what? Oh, I need to go to main. You should always test out your code. Make sure there's no errors, which it doesn't look like there is. So let's go back to level. Or actually, let's go back to entity. Um, let me go over here and move this to level. Alright, let's see. So, actually, one thing I want to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a rectangle. Just so we can see these getting drawn and all that. I'm going to fill it. Uh, I'm not sure how long I want to make these videos. They're probably going to be around 30, 40 minutes or so. So it's going to be longer than the videos I've put out before. Uh, which I think is a good thing. I'm going to cut these. And move this up to the load. So they only get so it, the entity doesn't automatically get loaded into the game loop on creation. Only when you call load. And then let's make a destroy function for it. And then also an overridable destroy function. I'm a little bit ru rusty at Love2D, by the way. So if I if you catch me googling, like certain modules, don't hate me, please. 
I haven't used it in a little while. Uh, self ov destroy. Ov is just means override. Okay, so I'm gonna copy these functions right here, or these function calls, and I'm gonna say instead of add, I'm gonna say remove, just like that. Text editor I'm using is of course Sublime Text. Um, I've been flirting with uh, Visual Studio Code, and I've been we might we might use it for some of these. Ugh, I keep doing that, dang it. We might use it for um, one of these episodes, but we'll see. All right, sweet. So entity. So yeah, it's not being called until we, actually let's go to level and let's test this out. Local e is equal to entity new. Then I'm gonna say e colon load. There we go. So the entity loaded correctly. Okay, so one thing we need to do in the entity is give it a flag. And that flag is gonna be a remove flag. Um, okay, so since what I want to do is create consistency in my code so that, uh, you know, it just makes sense. Um, I usually have parameters. My syntax, I usually have an underscore and parameters. Uh, my public me um, properties, property, <sighs> public variables or whatever, those I always capitalize. Lowercase for the private ones, which there isn't really private ones for Lua. Um, Methods I start with capital. I usually put underscore, but it's kind of messy with these, so I, I've been I've been not doing it in this project. So yeah, so I camel case it and underscore sometimes. All right, so let's we got an entity. Let's make a let's make a entity world. Okay, so entity world is just gonna be a local table again, but this is gonna be a module, not a non-creatable module. Non-creatable, as in it's not going to have a new or anything. It's just going to be a table. Uh, I've been naming it in it, haven't I? Yeah, I have. Okay. All right. So in it. I'm not sure how long the series will be, too. I might. I really want to make it so we can make this game really modular. So even you guys, if anyone watches this, can uh, edit it and mod the game. I think that would be awesome. Make it a little bit of a. Well, I don't really need to do this. Oh, I don't need. Yeah, I need a tick though. Make it a little bit more of a creative, like collaborative project. All right, let's make a entities table. Uh, there's no for each. Huh? I'm just gonna do an i pairs loop. I know naughty. Um, you might change. No, actually, I can't because I want to iterate through this backwards and destroy all the elements that, or all the entities that have the remove flag. Let, let me check. No, never mind. I, I know I have that. So let's say for i is equal to self or number of self dot entities. We're gonna go to one and we're gonna step negative one, and we're gonna say if well let's create a local variable and name it e for entity. Let's go self dot entities i. If e dot remove then. Uh, Let's create a. Actually, I think I did this in game loop. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to rewrite that. Just localize some of our global functions. I think I'm gonna try to enforce that in this project. Um, the platformer project. I was. I actually. I wanted to continue that, but I was. I was really frustrated with the project because I didn't do it in a very good way. Like I didn't do it like all the other projects I make, and I think the. The problem with that was I was camera shy and I was trying to think of what am I doing? I need to remove this. I was camera sh not I wasn't camera shy, but I was trying to do it, uh, make the project as kind of like a tutorial tutorial so you guys see what I'm working on or how I did things. Um, I don't really want to do that in this series. I just want to make a game like I normally do. You're gonna see me debug. It's gonna be kind of painful at times. But I think it's going to be interesting. Alright, entity world, create entity. So that's going to create an entity. Um, ooh. We're just going to say return 
Actually, no, we're not going to do that. So in here, we're going to let the world create an entity for us. So that I can add it to its loop and call the load function automatically. And maybe do some other stuff later. Uh, for instance, if I want to construct enemy or an entity using a Lua table, we might do it in here. Uh, and I'll give you some examples of that later. Oh my goodness, I can't. Again, talking and coding does not go hand in hand. Okay, so we're going to say local E is equal to entity new. And we're going to pass in an ID here. Pass in an ID. We're going to say E colon load return E, but after we insert it into our entities. So push self.entities E. All right, let's go into the main and actually include this. So we're going to say, and I'm just going to name it world. I don't want to name it entity world. Modules uh, entity world. Yeah, I kind of want to expand this channel into more than just Love TD because that's honestly what people need. Like, as a programmer, you should expand your expand your tool set to more than just one framework or one world, I guess. How would I call that? Create entity player. Okay. We got an error. Table expected got nil, and that is because we didn't call the init. I definitely want to make a better debug, um, better tools for debugging in this uh, game. I'm going to be working on tooling too because I want to be able to create uh, maps really easily. I want to be able to, actually speaking of tooling, um, do I have it on this computer? Let me see, let me search it, Framer. I built a tool a little while back, yeah okay we got it, wait, I want to find a newer one. I don't know if this is the newest one. Let me try it. So this tool basically allows you to construct... Uh, yeah, this is it. Okay. So this tool allows you to construct animations. Um, not construct animations, but more like put in the data for the animations. Um, I noticed when I was programming, the thing I spend the most time on just about is just putting in uh, stupid data. So I decided to make this program. It's written in Love 2D, of course, because I love Love 2D. Uh, let me just open up a stupid image. Uh, this is Veste, right? So what I mean is... Let's say you want to you want to know the x and y coordinate for each one of these frames, and then export a table, and then have the game load up that table. And you don't have to type that out. And like I used to, before I had this tool, I used to go into Paint.net and actually look up the uh, actual frame index or how wide and all that the frame is. But now I can just draw a square. I can duplicate that square. I can move the square around and actually draw out the frames right here. And I can't tell you how much time, I can even view it. Uh, please forgive my horrible, horrible art. And yes, this is a idle cycle. You can slow down the animation. Um, if you want to see something amazing, my brother got a kick out of this. It's actually quite useful too. Uh, let's draw a square. That was the uh, idle animation. You can export it, say that, and then type in the name of the animation. And then load that into whatever, whatever, uh, project uses a Lua table. But anyway, here's the walk cycle. Um, now he's going to be moonwalking, and I'll show you that right now. You can see he's walking, right? I have this little feature where you can actually animate him. Now I I don't have a way to actually swap which direction he goes, but um, but yeah, and actually you can move him up too. And this is useful for like bird animations if you want to see him, how they go up. Um, I think I actually have a bird one right here. No, let's see. Bird. Oh, wait, hold up. Open. Bird. Okay, I don't have it. Whatever. Um, not important. Uh, Entity Composer, this is going to be something in the future. I want to move this to a more robust uh, more robust UI toolkit soon. Maybe Kivi and Python, but we'll see. It's going to take some work to actually get that down. Where did I put this? Let's make a game. So anyway, I'm going to put this in here under the folder Tools, because we're going to be using this. 
I'm gonna lowercase it just in case like I'm gonna lowercase just about every file in this project the reason why I do that is because Android is picky about casing um, if you so if you have like a file that right right now I can require scenes and I can do this and I believe this will load yeah so it doesn't Lua doesn't care love doesn't care about the cap um, the capitalization of the module you're calling or the file you're calling but Android does and if we ever want to build this project I actually had a project before where I you can make those mistakes really easily like you can say I want everything to be capitalized here and lowercase here but you'll make a typo and I had that throughout my entire project and I had to go back through the whole thing and oh my goodness that was such pain let's check the time we're at 20 minutes all right we're good that was such a pain to do so I just now say everything's gonna be lowercase just so I don't get confused so now entities need components components are gonna be gameplay uh, if you if you've used game maker or the Godot engine or something like um, I was checking out Coco Studio Coco Studio is a good example it works on an entity component system actually even uh, unity uses an entity component system behind the scenes what it does is just allows you to write little scripts of uh, little things of gameplay of basically of uh, what, what is the word I'm trying to use you'll see you'll see okay so in components I'm gonna make a base component component is gonna be a newable object So I'm going to do this. Now the reason why I don't use meta tables and stuff like that, I do know how to do that and I've written my own object oriented libraries and all that. The reason why I don't do that is because this is just so much simpler, honestly. Uh, it's simpler, it makes sense in my mind. I have really no need for a, a really robust object oriented system because Lua isn't object oriented and if you force it to be in an object oriented paradigm, you can write some really weird and kind of bad code. Um, to be completely honest with you, and that's just from experience too. Um, I've been really productive like this, so I, this is just how I write my code. If you guys are following at home and you want to make a project um, and kind of follow along, then yeah, totally uh, use whatever system you f you feel. Also, one thing I'm doing here is uh, I've gotten tons of comments about people asking why I don't use a library. Why don't I use a libraries? Like, wouldn't it be faster if I just said, hey, uh, let's see. Wouldn't it be faster if I just said, hey, why, um, let's use a entity component framework? They've probably written better, faster code than what I can write, right? Well, the reason why, okay, for, for one, I do use li libraries all the time. I actually genuinely do. Um, in this project, I'm not going to, though because I think it's really good for people to learn how to make their own tools, their own uh, projects, their own everything, you know? I think that's important to do. To make their own modules, their own code. And the reason why is because, uh, let's say you don't have a library for something and now you're stuck, you know, actually writing it. Also, knowing this, your own code, like knowing your code inside and out, I think is very important. Let's see. So all these are going to be default overridable. It's kind of going on a rant there, and I don't remember where I was going. Yeah, writing your own code, your own modules. Like, okay, so I've had a job in the past where, um, where it was in Corona SDK, right? And I was helping this guy debug his application. There was something wrong with the composer library. Uh, the Composer library is a library that's built into, built directly into uh, um, Chrome SDK, right? It's their flagship like scene management system, and it actually it's really nice. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say it's not, but major problems with it is that it's it's uh, what's the word? Uh, it's unlike all the other modules, as in it's not. The issue was we were declaring a variable outside the scene library, right? And w inside the library, it wasn't correctly creating that object, and it was kind of a mess. But basically, it was in oh, what is that word? In 
where it's not like the other modules in the project. I'll think of it. It's going to kill me now. Okay, actually, let's go back to the component. Let's give it an... Oh, I do have an ID. Perfect. ID should be mandatory, so I'm actually going to create a cert here. Um, say error component new component must have a ID exclamation mark is it serious anyway basically it was it was such a pain to debug I had to learn the library inside and out to be able to understand it and even then it wasn't a syntax error it wasn't a logic error the issue was that the library just did not support this certain way of programming and that was causing that caused at least three days of issues that is super unproductive whereas right here this scene library right here does just about the same amount of things that that composer library did and it takes no time at all to actually write so sometimes it's actually more efficient to um, to write your own stuff and sometimes it's not especially when it comes to networking I would not suggest uh, writing your own networking library oh my goodness how am I doing this this thing nope I'm not doing that component I'm gonna pass in args here And I'm going to load it with this and pass in the args. Actually, I think it's self and args. Let's see. Whoop. Uh, I guess I should probably explain what I'm doing right here. So I'm creating a class that's called a component, right? The component's going to have update. It's going to have all these other update, tick. I should probably make it destroy. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to, each one of these methods is going to accept the entity and it's going to perform some work on the entity. For instance, the render, of course, will draw the entity. The update will, let's say if it's a physics entity, or it's a physics component, then it will update the physics of the entity itself, um, which is super useful. Uh, right here, we're saying when we create, we, we want to pass in arguments, right? Uh, and then load the arguments right here. Um, so we're just going to pass that through when we create the entity, or the component, rather. So I think, actually, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to name this add, because we're going to have to add a lot of components. We don't want to, we don't want to make this like that. Then we're going to get by ID. So we can get add components self. You should probably check if the component exists and then throw an error if it doesn't. So let's do that. Assert. Assert, all that does is it throws an error and I'll put an error message on the on the uh, on the screen. If we say assert, oh, so there's two parameters in here, and if you guys don't know what this is, you guys do, I'm sorry, but um, if this if this evaluates to false, this parameter right here, then it's going to throw an error, and this will be the error message. If it's true, then it's just going to continue on. Um, so if self dot, oh, this should be a dot components. Components ID uh, actually, we can just assert that. If it's equal to null, I'm going to say error entity get cannot find component colon. I'm going to concatenate ID. Boom. It's good to do error checking because let's say we didn't do this, then it's going to return a null value, and it's much better to do it in the getter right here than in the another component that requires this component right here um, and actually that's a good that's a good point we need to say um, have a requires for the component right here let me think how am I gonna do this um, I'm gonna say entity con has component components now I'm just gonna say requires that's not how you spell it. There we go. And this is going to be a table right here. So I'm going to name 
it r. These are the requirements. For I'm just gonna do an i pair loop. Actually, it needs to be a pair loop. Uh, it's gonna be self, not components. If let's think. Uh, no, let's do r. Then just make this i pair. Loop. If self dot components v is equal to nil then I'm gonna assert false and throw this error message requires component requires the component dot dot concatenate r uh, actually v there we go so this is to kind of make sure that let's say this okay so for instance the uh, sprite component is going to need a body component body component is going to contain an x y width height the sprite component needs the body component so it knows where to draw the sprite so in when we create a component we're going to say this component requires this other component hope that makes sense if not I'll show you how it works and then it will hopefully make sense anyway I'm gonna wrap up this um, episode right now uh, so I can edit it and get it out but yeah uh, thanks for watching guys please stay tuned I will come out with more uh, of these videos and we'll complete this game together hopefully we can make it really modular and community based um, if you want some inspiration by the project just go look up those old uh, Game Boy Color games uh, Oracle of Seasons or um, time oh, what was it just look at the Zelda games on the Game Boy Color. That's what I want to kind of make. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.